From somewhere in Hollywood, it's the Tom Micah Show. Oh, really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host, Wacko. I doubt our telephone number you're going to need it. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. I think I want to whack somebody. And I'm thinking about whacking somebody because I'm looking at this story about a guy named John Cleese. You know who John Cleese is? John Cleese was on the TV show uh, Monty Python. And uh, that's what he is primarily known for. Later on, he made a variety of appearances on oh, a bunch of American sitcoms and stuff. But it's Monty Python for which he's remembered, and secondarily for a, a British sitcom called Faulty Towers. And John Cleese, um, if he is not a listener to this show, maybe he ought to be. Because listen to what's happening to him. Actor and comedian John Cleese said his third divorce will be, quote, worth every penny. After he was ordered to pay his estranged wife $150,000 a month, a month, in so-called temporary maintenance. Vagina money. The Monty Python star separated from his psychotherapist wife, Alice Faye Eichelberger, whose work involved helping former England rugby captain Will Carling come to terms with his love rat image. What's that me? Am I supposed to care about that? Four months ago after 15 years of marriage. I guess in England they know what that's all about. We love rugby, but we just don't know who any of the players are. When we were in England last year, Gary and I watched a lot of rugby, and it was good, but not so much that we knew who anybody was. Says here, speaking outside court on Tuesday, Cleese said it's going to be very, very expensive, but it will be worth every penny. The now 68-year-old comedian it was taken into court in a wheelchair after undergoing a knee operation on Monday. Also joked that he had sent his wife's divorce claims to his former Monty Python colleagues and suggested they could find enough humor in them for a reality television show. Earlier, Jacqueline Michaud, representing Ms. Eichelberger, 63, told the court her client had, quote, nothing, zero, because Mr. Cleese had not seen fit to pay any support up to this point. Well, wait a minute. Why would she have zero? Let's go back here. She's a psychotherapist. She worked with a famous British rugby player. Um, don't psychotherapists make at least fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year? How could you have zero if you're a psychotherapist? Huh? You know how. Says here, Cleese added that he had been forced to sell his $16.5 million Santa Barbara ranch because of the divorce. I guess he won't be my neighbor up there anymore. Daniel Jaffe, representing Cleese, told the court that Ms. Zeigelberger's claim that the star earned 93,000 pounds a month or about $185,000, was based on last year's income when he enjoyed earnings from work on Shrek 3 and a property deal in which he made $1.5 bucks. Okay. So what? 
says here, Cleese's actual monthly income was around $110,000, Mr. Jaffe said. Court files reportedly calculated Cleese's earnings over the past six years at more than $21 million. That's about $3 million a year. Says here, all of Cleese's three wives have been American. His first wife was actress Connie Booth, whom he married in 1968 and divorced 10 years later. He then married TV director Barbara Trentum in 1981 before divorcing in 1990. Then he went on to, to marry Ms. Eichelberger in 1992. So here's another person with money who's paying through the nose. $150,000 a month. That's $1.8 million a year in vagina money. For a 63-year-old vagina that he probably hasn't seen in some time. And even at that, at that rate, he says it's worth every penny. Every penny. Now, I have never paid anybody. $150,000 a month or $1.8 million a year <laughs> because I have protected myself. I have had prenups. I also, in those prenups, made sure that not only did I not have to pay vagina money, I made sure that I would not have to pay community property. So all the money I earned during the time I was with someone was mine and it was not split with anybody else. That's why I live in a couple of big, beautiful houses, and I can't tell you where any of the uh, exes live. <laughs> and if I could, I wouldn't want to. But um, I have to imagine that some of you out there have paid through the nose for a divorce. Maybe not as much as John Cleese or other people. But I have to imagine there are some of you who have paid and paid and paid Maybe it made you want to cry. Maybe it made you freak out. Maybe it made you depressed. But do you agree that divorce, you know, that's, it's the old joke and it's true. Why does divorce cost so much? Because it's worth it. And here is John Cleese paying $1.8 million a year in vagina money, and he says it'll be worth every penny. Is that how you feel about your divorce? Ta, ta, ta. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I was just like that one guy that was waiting around for that one girl forever. And then it occurred to me why. There's tons and tons of girls out there. If one doesn't give it up to you, many more will. You know, you just got to find them and make it happen. Right. Why waste your time on one girl? It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom like a show. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Is your divorce worth every penny? Actor comedian John Cleese is paying one point eight million a year in vagina money, which, far as I can tell, is more than half of what he makes. He says it's worth it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Richard on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. Yeah, it's crazy how much uh, we're required to pay when we go through a divorce. And I think it's wrong, you know. I, I was personally married for uh, about six years. Uh, and when we got together, you know, we didn't have much. Uh, when we divorced, um, I'm an audiologist, and, and I had uh, six practices. So I was making some pretty good money. And... In combined child support and alimony, I'm paying about fifteen thousand dollars a month. Yikes! A month. I'm supporting her and her new boyfriend. You know. <laughs> of course you are. So, By the way, how much do you make? I make about four hundred and fifty a year. And you're so, paying how much per month? Fifteen thousand a month. Fifteen. So you're paying one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year. So that's, you're you're paying more than half your net income. Right. And that's uh, for both alimony and child support. It's outrageous. And, and that, that's not even counting that I had to pay for her attorney. I had to pay for all, everything through the divorce. So, and you also had to give her half of everything. 
I had to give her a lot. So definitely for all the boys out there listening, prenup, prenup, prenup. Can't say it enough. Or don't get married. Or don't get married, but if you do. <laughs> so it's outrageous. <laughs> hey, take me out, uh, Daniel Smart style. Who's that? Uh, cutthroat. <laughs> Who is that, though? The, the guy that got uh, his throat slashed out in Iraq, I believe. Oh, I didn't know his name. <laughs> Do you have anything? <laughs> yeah, we got something for you. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Was your divorce worth it? Rick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, how are you? Doing okay. God bless you, Tom. Tom, you did a, you've done a lot for me. You did a lot for me throughout my divorce because I listened to you for about three or four years up until the time of my divorce. And I listened to you. I'm 45 years old. You know, I was married for almost 21 years. And, you know, the, she ended up cheating on me. The day I found out, I walked right out the door. You know, no questions asked. And, uh, you know, I used to listen to you, and I'd, I'd hear you talk about these guys. I remember hearing a specific story you were talking about. Um, you were talking to some guy, and he was actually sleeping on his mother's in his mother's garage. Right. I remember that. You remember that? I and do. It was, Tom, it wasn't within probably four months after hearing that conversation with you that I, that, you know, my divorce thing happened. I found out she was cheating on me. Like I said, I immediately split. And, uh, you know, I knew that I had her in this situation. She was cheating on me. She was guilty. I knew the last thing I wanted to do was get lawyers involved in it. So I sat down with her over a cup of coffee at Starbucks and hashed out my divorce settlement with her. I wound up paying her 500 bucks a month for 10 and a half years, which was half the term of our marriage. Wow. Because I knew if she went to lawyers, you know, and got them involved, you know, I was making three times as much money as she was. You know, I knew that, you know, she would end up, you know, in, in 10 years in California, anything over 10 years is considered a long-term marriage. You end up paying them, you know, whatever the amount of spousal support is, you end up paying that for the rest of their lives until they're, or until they're remarried. And I didn't want any part of that. So, you know, I sat down with her. I hashed it out. I'm, bas I'm making, I'm making a, almost a hundred grand a month, a, a year, and I'm paying her $6,000 a year in, in alimony. And when will and, that know, when will that end? It'll end in uh, in in another seven years. Now, did you ever? Oh boy, another seven years. Did you ever formalize this with oh, a yeah, document? Absolutely. You did. Absolutely, signed, sealed, delivered by a judge. Absolutely. You know, and uh, you know, I mean, it's you know, it, to me, I used to always say, and this was the thing, you know, her and I, you know, things were going downhill for you know a number of years. And my friends would always say to me, dude, why don't you just get out of it, you know? And I would tell them, it's cheaper to keep her. I was totally wrong, Tom. That's right. Totally wrong. It is I not cheaper to keep I have more money in the bank right now paying her child or alimony. I have more money in the bank than I ever had in the 21 years that I was married to her, man. It is you definitely, know? it is definitely not cheaper to keep her. There's no doubt about it. Uh, if anybody's thinking that out there, any of these young guys are thinking that out there, they're totally wrong. Just get the hell out, you know. Try to get out as cheap as you can, but definitely get out. Always remember, and I keep telling this to the guys, there's an absolute state-mandated formula in California. Every two days you stay is another day you pay. Exactly, exactly, Tom. You know, as I was going through, you know, as I was, you know, knew that I was going to be going through that divorce, you know, within, you know, the days following, you know, me finding out that she had cheated on me, you know, I, I sat on a computer at work one night just reading the California divorce laws in my office, in the dark. It was like being in a nightmare reading those laws and what it does to the men in this state. And I knew at that point, I remembered all the things that you had said, and I thought, I, I've got to get out of this as cheaply and as quickly as I possibly can. And, you know, thank God you're around to help these guys out, to talk to them about this stuff, because, you know, believe me, I was lucky. I was very lucky, you know, considering that, that I'm going to be paying her $60,000 over the next 10 and a half years, you know, is very lucky. Like that guy you were just talking to, you know, $15,000 right. a month, half of his income. You know, it's just, it's crazy. And uh, is she remarried, or does she have a new yeah, boyfriend? she's living with the boyfriend. He's moved in with her. Uh huh. You know, um, and he'll I be living there. He'll be living there until she gets every last penny of vagina money. 
Oh, exactly. Of course. Oh, yeah. I know. There's no way that you know. There's no way she's going to marry him. You know, she will not give up that that five hundred dollars a month. But uh, I ran into her, you know, a couple weeks ago. You know, and she was telling me how her credit is all shot and just, and it's you know, it's ruined. You know, and uh, I'm looking at my credit report and I'm thinking, you know what? Thank God. You know, thank God. She would have dragged you into the quicksand with her. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, that's the one thing about them. You know, we give them that money and they know, they, they know nothing about how to function with it. You know, so all they end up doing is just screwing themselves even more. So, you know, that's where she's at right now. And, uh, you know what? That's not my problem anymore. That's right. That is not my problem. You are right about that. Rick, thank you for that. Well, it's worth every penny, and he's not paying that much. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, look at these calls coming in here. Bobby on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey there, Tom. Bobby. I won't, I won't ask you how you're doing. I know you're doing good, bud. I am. Hey, I, uh, I'm not doing bad myself. I was in a 25-year marriage from hell. It was I, I compare it to being in Vietnam. I use that term a lot. I pay her 50 grand a year, 4,200 bucks a month. I pay double that to be away from this bitch. My life is sweet. I make a tremendous amount of money. I'm very comfortable. She gets a lot of money. She doesn't know what to do with this money. She's always calling on the 10th and the 25th to see if I can give her her money early. I'm paying for a boyfriend. I don't care. I don't care. I'd give her twice as much just so I don't have to see her again. <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing about it, uh, yeah, your last caller mentioned the over 10-year period. For the listeners out there, the, the over 10-year period is considered a marriage of long duration. Good God, they are long, that's for sure. But the point is, is that the courts themselves, with a marriage under 10 years, they have no jurisdiction left after that agreement is up. In other words, if you're married eight years, you've got a term of four years you're paying her. After that four years is over, you're done. If a marriage over 10 years or a long duration, the court still remains in jurisdiction of that case. And that means that your last caller, when he's done paying her for his seven and a half years, she can petition the court to ask for more money and get it for the rest of her life, unlike the marriage for under 10 years. So if there's any callers out there, things are going wrong, if there's a remote sniff of you got trouble, bail now, because Tom's formula is 100% correct. For every two days you're married, you're paying vagina money for one day. And if you go past that magic 10 years, you are screwed, my friend. You're screwed forever. Amen. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Guys, you're hearing it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Anthony on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? Great. Well, I, my story starts off actually kind of bad. Um, married less than six years. Uh, caught her cheating. And um, fortunately for me, she was on a little guilt trip. And knowing at the time I wanted to get out, we uh, went through a legal service, basically a legal assistant, wasn't a lawyer, but as long as we both agreed that we had a right to have a lawyer there, it stands up in the state of California. And I told her that if she would sign off on my uh, retirement, on my overtime, on uh, alimony, and I would just pay child support, that would be a sign for me that she was serious about continuing this marriage. And maybe after a year of being apart, we would remarry. So she went ahead and agreed, thinking that I wouldn't go through with it, and I did. Although I had a high uh, child support at the time for 2000 a month, which was about half my uh, salary. But the good thing was that a year later, child support can always be uh, played with, even though it's in a contract, because the courts want the kids to get what they deserve. So I was able to go back and cut that down all the way to just under 900 Wow. And uh, when we went back to court, she tried to get everything that she uh, – promise you wouldn't touch, but unfortunately the contract stood and the judge said, you signed off on all this and uh, you're not going to get it. And uh, she was out of luck. You were lucky, Anthony. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, would you ever get married again? You know what, Tom? I did. What? <laughs> I did. But I did. I married someone who not only made about twice as much as I did, but um, 
you know, I have a saying that the one good person always marries one they had a good relationship with their father because they have at least some sort of respect for men. But he had taught her finances and everything. When I met her, she was uh, just under 30, had already owned her own house outright, had a better financial responsibility than I ever did and made a lot more than I did. And uh, I told myself I would never get married, but um, and the, with the kind of person she was, it was a deal I couldn't uh, resist. So in six years, everything's perfect. To this day, we don't have a credit card in our name. We what don't a, have a bank account in our name. What about a baby? We do have one baby. <laughs> we do have a baby. But, uh, again, um, everything, she, we pay, uh, we write half the mortgage equally in our, in our own separate accounts. And that she's uh, more up with that than I am because of the fact that she's always had a clean financial record. Mine wasn't bad, but, of course, I had a previous marriage. So um, I found the diamond in the rough. So far, so good. Okay. Well, good luck. I don't know why you would want to get married after what happened before. <laughs> All right, Tom. Thank you, Anthony. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jane on the Tom Likas show. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Hi, Jane. Hi there. Listen, I love your show. And I'm just li sitting here listening right now and cannot believe how many stand-up guys are doing their thing for their wife and kids. I was in a 10-year marriage. He left me for a crack call. <laughs> Stopped working. <laughs> hasn't paid any money. He is about to go to jail. He gave up work and took up, I don't know, whatever. So I'm on the other end. Took of up what? Again. Crack? I can't, believe, I can't believe I did. Wait, wait, wait. Did he take it? Wait, wait, wait. Did he take up crack? No. He just, I don't know. I don't think so. He seems pretty normal. We have kids and he takes his kids and he's okay. But he just gave up working and just lives off this girl. So I'm getting absolutely screwed, absolutely nothing. I have two kids to raise by myself. I'm not getting anything. It's, he's about to go to jail. And, and of I'm course, mad. he was and perfect. I, you know, I'm so mad I didn't marry the guy that's giving his wife the 15 grand a month. Yeah. Man, I messed up. Of course, your, your ex, he was perfect when you met him, wasn't he? Um, Just no. perfect. <laughs> we were young, silly, crazy. Stupid. Up. If I thought about it, it would have never happened. <laughs> right. Okay, so you married a loser. And a deadbeat. A and now you are amazed that he's a loser and a deadbeat. No, I'm not amazed. I always thought he would. But I thought, you know, I didn't, I don't want anything from him. I don't want alimony. I make my own money. I go to work. I do my thing. I just want him to help with his children. Period. It's not about me. It's not about alimony. What do you but want him to, what do you want him to do? $9,000 in, in child support arrears. Ah, he's but. Gonna go, he's going to go to jail. Well, but again, the guy uh, was a loser and a deadbeat when you met him. I know. And well, you know what? I was young and silly. Now I'm 40. I'm a woman. Um, you know, I know. Got, made better choices these days. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't have waited until you were 35 or something to get married. Yeah, but I didn't want to be an old mama with kitties. <laughs> but now <laughs> you're a younger mama with kitties that you have to support. But you know what? I'm doing it. I'm doing my thing. Well, we're managing without it. So so far, so good. How's how's your sex life over there? Well, over where? Where are you? In, where I'm in, in America. In, <laughs> well, I, I know you're in America. I mean, over there in Playa del Rey, where the players live. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's kicking over here in Playa. <laughs> 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 oh, well, I just want to say I love your show, and you've got some great listeners there that are doing the right thing, standing up to their kids. So, hurrah for all those guys out there. There we go. All right, Tom. Thank you, Jane. Take it easy. Bye. Appreciate the call. Why don't you assume that I was talking about her being out of the country? I went over there at the other end of the phone. <laughs> Must be terrible walking around thinking everybody thinks you're a foreigner all the time. That that's the focus of their interest in having a conversation with you. Hello. <laughs> My goodness. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our I, I've known people like this. They're like, uh, for example, like Asian American, and they're constantly convinced that everybody's looking at them funny because they're Asian. It's like, maybe they're looking at you funny because you got other reasons, you know? Maybe you, you, you got bedhead today, or maybe, uh, maybe you're wearing an ugly shirt. <laughs> Some people are just convinced about that. I knew a chick recently who was convinced that everybody hates Hispanics. Everybody.
See that guy looking at me over there? He doesn't like the fact that I'm Hispanic. Look, he's looking at me right now. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. We'll take a break. We will come back, and we're going to talk to somebody who is about to get a divorce. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. I'm a long-time listener. My dad listens to you. My brother listens to you. Actually, my whole family of men listen in at 3 p.m. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Actor John Cleese paying his ex-wife $1.8 million a year in vagina money. And says it's worth every penny. Cindy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. And you know what? I I know what your subject is about, Uh, Tom. I have followed you forever. I love you. And I've been there to Vegas. I've been there to see you everywhere. And um, I just love everything you have to say. But today I just wanted to ask you a question. Okay. Um, I've been married for 20 years. And um, now my husband, he left me. And um, he took everything we own. And I've gone to an attorney. And the attorney has said... Um, that I own half of that, so I have to do that in the papers. I don't want to do it. I don't want to be mean, but at the same time, I'm entitled to that. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, what the lawyer says legally is true. And uh, you're... I'm I'm mean and I'm a bitch. (laughs) Do I think you're mean and a bitch? Yeah. Well, not necessarily. I mean, you don't have a prenup. No, and I supported him probably for more than half of our marriage. Yeah, which was not a good idea. Well, I did it. I know. But, um, you know, I, I don't think everybody who goes to court and asks for the community property is a bitch. Now, I had a prenup when I was married and had a prenup, but it said there's no community property. And the people who accepted that in the agreement, you know, could take it or leave it. They didn't have to marry me. Well, we were young. We didn't know that, you know. I understand. But you... uh you don't have a prenup. You, the lawyer's right that you're entitled to it. You don't have to do it. That's the only part I don't agree with. I know, but aren't I entitled to something? Well, it's two different things. Are you entitled to it legally? Yes. yes. Uh, you said uh, the, the attorney told you you have to do it. That's not true. No, he didn't say that. He said I'm entitled to it. Because right, you said he said that. Yeah. But he didn't say that. No, he put it in the papers, and I haven't signed the papers yet. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I've been dragging my feet. I've had these papers for five weeks, and I haven't done it. And uh, your husband did what? Disappeared? No, no. He's right here. And you know what? He just called me last night and asked me if he could take me to Palm Springs on Saturday. <laughs> what should I do about that? You don't want to I... go to Palm Springs with him, do you? If I do, I don't know what that's going to mean. Could I? Why would you want to do that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, he 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 left. He he disappeared. (laughs) He 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 left. He disappeared. I know, I know. And I asked him, "Why are you calling me now?" And he said, "Because I was stupid." Well, that's two months later. So um, now I think, okay, is he going to take me out to the desert and kill me? (laughs) Well, (laughs) you could always drive yourself out there and meet him. Well, I don't know why you would want to. Really? You think I should Someone did that to me, I wouldn't be going. Okay. Tell you right now. Okay. You have your chance with me, and then once... uh, You know, again, it's different. I have had over the years what you call friends with benefits. Yes. And... uh, He's becoming that guy. Some of these arrangements have spread out over time, over, you know, myself and the other person being married... uh, divorced, living with people, whatever. And so those people have a different set of rules. They play by a different set of rules. If uh, 
if they decide they need to uh, try monogamy for a while with the husband they've just married, I don't argue with them because I know that eventually most of them will be back. <laughs> yes. But if somebody moves in with me and starts tracking my whereabouts all the time, uh, once they decide they're going to just bolt or leave me or they're fed up or whatever, okay, you're entitled to your opinion. It's a free country. But uh, they don't be coming back because once you do that, I'm done. Once you screw somebody else in a marriage or a living together relationship with me, it's over. See, that's the hardest part for me. I've been married to him for 20 years, and I know that he's already paraded a couple girls over the Internet um, in front of my friends. So I should say, good God, it's over, you know. But I haven't done that yet. What's what's my problem? <laughs> um, your problem is you haven't met anybody yet. You're feeling sorry for yourself, and you're about to do this because you're feeling very low self-esteem, and it's something you'll regret later. And I know you're going to say that. I have low self-esteem, but... Um, I and you do. I didn't when I met him. I didn't. Uh, that's why he liked me, because I was a proud, wonderful person that had her own full-time job that made three times as much as him, and now all of a sudden I'm <laughs> nobody. Well, it's not that you're nobody. It's just simply that, uh, you know, for whatever reason, you let your self-esteem slip away. You know, they call it self-esteem for a reason. Yes. Because it comes from yourself. Okay. So if you had self-esteem and then you didn't have it, that's because you lost it, not because somebody else took it away. Okay. All right. So I understand that. one great way to build up your self-esteem, and I'm speaking from experience, is when somebody calls you who dumped you two months ago and says, come to Palm Springs with me, you say no, and your self-esteem will start to go up. <laughs> okay. I'm just... I'm just scared to say no. That's all. I know, because you're afraid you'll never meet anybody again. Uh huh. So you're you'd actually take somebody who abused you or dissed you or uh, screwed around on you or bolted on you, rather than taking a chance on finding somebody else. Well, I don't know why I'm so scared. I honestly don't know why I'm so scared. But well, again, it's because your self-esteem is low. But once you start saying no, your self-esteem goes up. Okay. All right. Have you thought about trying that? Yeah, well, I have many friends that really want to be with me, but I've take I've sent everybody off. So you you had no interest in being with another man? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. You do? So. Yes, very much so. <laughs> so what are you waiting for? I don't know. Why you're being are you being monogamous still? Mm, no. Well, yeah, clearly you are. No, I'm not. So you are seeing other people? I am seeing other people. And having right. sex with them? Yes. How is it? Good. It's good. Not as good as my husband. <laughs> oh, well, the, you know, that's an up and down thing. You have to. When you start getting older, you know, and you think, oh, my God, I don't want somebody to see me like this. I don't want somebody to see me naked. I don't want somebody to see with me no tan. And... Well, another way to raise your self-esteem, darling, uh, that is used by many women who are separated or divorced is to get back to the gym. Well, I'm I'm tiny. I'm I'm really very small. That doesn't mean you shouldn't go to the gym. Yep, you're right. You're right. I'm not saying you have to bulk up like Sammy Sosa, okay? I'm no. just saying that uh, you've got to go back and be in shape so that you don't worry about taking your clothes off. Well, I'm 5'2", and I weigh 105 pounds. And, um, so is your body in good shape? Yeah, pretty much. For... Then why would you be worried about people seeing you naked? I don't know. What do you mean you don't I, know? Just because no one's seen me naked for many, many years. Why not? Well, because I've been married. <laughs> I see. I don't know. I, I know. I should get out there. I'm just afraid of finding somebody, and I don't want to take my clothes off, and I don't want to... Um, meet somebody new so I want to have him back and that's a stupid thing because if I have him back he's just going to be the meanest person in the whole world it's not stupid <laughs> well he is going to be uh, because you you know what you're getting right 
Well, and you know what? I think I wanted to say that to you because I know you're going to tell me I'm an ass and I don't, he doesn't deserve me and he doesn't deserve me. Hang on a second, Cindy. Let me get Dee Dee on here. Dee Dee, what did you want to say to Cindy? I want to tell Cindy to let it go. Let him go. Take care of yourself. There is nothing wrong with being single. Um, I am newly divorced, and I am loving it to a T. It is a beautiful thing to be on your own, taking care of yourself. I don't know if you have any kids, but let it go. I don't understand what you're holding on to. It seems like he walked out on you, and why should you allow him to come back after he walked out on you? I mean, what, what's the benefit? Um, can I can I ask you something, Dee? Of course you can. Um, I don't drink. I I really try. I'm trying, and I'm trying. Uh, all my friends are there. They're all alcoholics, and I'm trying to stay away from all of that. How do you meet somebody if you don't meet them in a bar? How do you? What's your question? How do you leave somebody? How do you meet somebody if you don't meet them in a bar? How do you meet somebody? Yeah, meet a new person. Why are you even worried about meeting a new person? You need to take some time to focus on yourself. You you seem like you have issues with being single, being alone. You have self-esteem issues. You shouldn't even be interested in meeting anybody, at least not on a serious level, not right now. No, Why you're would, right. You're, you're totally yeah. right. You are totally right. You okay. should not. That should not even be part of your concern right now. You need to work on you, and you need to really get back your self-esteem and appreciate who you are and love yourself. Let it go. It is beautiful being single. And you know what? I was just like you, um, you know, just felt alone and felt abandoned. But you know what? I got over it, and I love being single, I would never, ever, at this point right now, consider taking on a serious relationship. I'm not interested in getting married. I do not want to be tied down. And you know what? The workload for me right now is easier. I have two children, and I love just me and my kids. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. But you have to just let it go, and you need to focus on yourself. You shouldn't be focused on meeting someone else right now. It's it's way too early for you to be even interested in anybody on a serious level. You might want to do maybe a couple of booty calls here and there, but <laughs> dating do somebody. Think, do you think it's totally stupid for me to go with him to Palm Springs? What would be the benefit? Is there a benefit for you? I mean, is he going to call off the, what did he ask for? Did he ask for a divorce or what did he ask for? He doesn't have any idea I have these papers. He has no idea. So what papers did, did he submit to you? Was it papers for no, divorce? No, 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 no. I have the papers. He has no idea I have the papers. Oh, you drew the papers. Yeah, and I've never oh. served him yet. Uh, they're all here in my house. So um, oh, I don't I don't know. Is his fling over? Maybe that kind of fell through. I mean, I don't really understand what... Well, should I say <laughs> get an STD test before I take you to Palm Springs? Why would you want to go? I don't understand that part. Why would you want to go to Palm Springs with this guy? I don't know, because I want to, I, you know, this is my fantasy, Tom. I want to go there and him beg me to come back oh. and come back. Oh, you're killing me. Janelle, what do you want to say here to Cindy? Sweetie, sweetie, you've got to move on with your life. You know, it sounds like uh, you're going through a hard time, and I know that Tom's a big proponent of, uh, getting self-help, and it really sounds like you need to um, seek some uh, serious help um, by a professional. Um, you've been holding on to that paperwork for way too long, and um, you really need to get some help. Okay. Thank you very much. You really do, and um, I'm serious about that because uh, you're only hurting yourself. No doubt about it. Cindy, good luck. Keep in touch with us. Thanks for the call. It's the Tom Likas Show.